Hi, my name is Amberly, and I have the privilege of serving as one of our executive pastors here at Transformation Church. We just want to say thank you so much for tuning in from wherever you are watching from. And if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. We believe that God has a word for you. So let's jump into this amazing message. I really believe this cuffing series has been delivering people. Like anybody who's checked in to this series full throttle, they're, they're having to face themselves. Like we talked about being cuffed to cake almost six months ago. Let's take a poll. How many people, now we're hot, humble, open, and transparent. Look at somebody said, <sighs> how many people are still cuffed to cake in this room right now as we're going into the holiday season? Some of y'all are lying. Thank you, my brother, for being truthful. Some of us are still cuffed to the comments. What everybody's saying about us. Checking back every three seconds. Checking the email. Checking to see what, like, some of us have been cuffed to constant. Let me ask that one. How many people are still cuffed to constant? You don't stop. You keep running. You think somehow you're made better in the sight of God if you do more. But he called you a human being, not a human doing. What I believe my assignment is in this whole series is to challenge the things that have become, watch this word, idols in our lives. Some of us, our pace, our production, our success, our relationships, they have become the thing that have replaced God. So as long as those things are going good, we don't think that we need him. And it's not until those things disappoint us that we somehow call him back on Jesus. And God said, I want you to have the things that I have designed for you to enjoy in this life, but never at the expense of our relationship. And the truth of the matter is the reason why we can't be connected and cuffed to Christ is because we're cuffed to a lot of other things. Some of y'all are like, okay, Pastor Mike, you talk about this cuffing season. This is week 12 of a series. We're not just starting this. If this is your first time hearing this, you need to go back and watch from one all the way to today because it is a process of actually shedding the things that we think love us but don't actually love us back. There are so many of us. Okay, let me just back up because somebody's like, Susan, cuffing season? Are they talking about handcuffs? Never had that happen before. Tell me, what does this cuffing season thing mean? Let me give you a definition. Straight out of the Urban Dictionary. Cuffing season is a season where because of loneliness and desperation, watch this, you settle for a relationship that is way beneath your standard. This is literally cuffing season. The fall and winter is when people get into really dumb relationships because they want to snuggle with somebody, Netflix and chill, and end up with issues by the summer. Okay, let me, okay. And the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about being cuffed to control. Like some of us have to be in control all the time, and we worry ourselves, and we're frustrated because we got to know how everything's going to work out. And then last week... We went kind of deep on them, and I, I kind of snuck it in on you. I said, cuff to contamination, but we talked about the spirit of Jezebel, where, where there's, there's a spirit that is trying to control from the back seat and, and get you to do things and say things that are not like you or not like Christ, and it's been running your life. Today, I think this message is going to be uh, more real than both of those. Because some of y'all could have dodged them too, like control, uh-uh, <laughs> contamination, nope. <laughs> but this one? See, let me walk you into it slowly so your heart will be prepared for the uh, pounding that you're about to take in the spirit today. Um, anybody ever play video games? I need hands, like in the chat, video games. What was the first video game system you ever remember? Shout it out at me right now. <laughs> Okay, Nintendo 64, we gotta go further back than that. Which one? Sega Genesis, we gotta go further back. She said, Atari! Okay, anybody got further back than Atari? 
Y'all, what'd you say? Jalico vision? Calico vision? Is, is that real? Man on the front row like, uh, uh, okay, okay, cool. So, so I didn't make the Atari um, timeline, but the, in the Todd household, the first game system was the original. Y'all know what I'm about to say? Nintendo. Okay, y'all remember the gray box and you had to lift it up and you had <laughs> breath of the spirit, <laughs> pneuma of God. <laughs> like, if you've never blown on a cartridge, you haven't lived. It's the first miracle you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> Ow! First miracle ever. It'll increase your faith. <laughs> and um, me and my older brother Gabe would play Nintendo, but then one Christmas, dad took it to the next level. And we opened up this box with this little blue hedgehog on it. And when the Sega Genesis came in to play, that, I mean, there was nothing like playing Sega until Sony came out with this little device with three circles on it called a PlayStation. And I don't know if I was the only one, but I was a professional CD cleaner. I had alcohol. See, some of y'all know what I'm talking about because the games could get scratched, and if it gets scratched, then you can't play it no more. So I had alcohol, I had cotton swabs, and if you, if you, I mean, if you really had to do it, you had to use the bottom of your T-shirt. Y'all, yes! I love y'all. Okay. And, 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 and all of these games were so fun, but the one thing I hated about all of them is that you only could be so far away from the console because there was a control that had a wire that you had to be connected to. So y'all see how I preach, like, 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 so there would be times that I would be playing and get so into it that right at the moment that I was about to win, no! And I would lose, not because I didn't have the moves, I lost because I lost connection. Okay. And then what ended up happening is um, um, probably about three years later, we got this thing called a Nintendo 64. And Nintendo 64 changed the game because the game started changing on the Nintendo 64. We got this one game called NFL Blitz. And then we got this other game called NBA Jam. He's on fire. Some people are still looking at me like, what is he talking about? I know you're too safe for this, but this was ministry to me, okay? And, and, and then I still had the same problem with those things because it had the controller. But then the PlayStation 2 came out. And when the PlayStation 2 came out, they invented this new technology called wireless controllers. You could be in another room and still controlling what was happening. And I began to think about that when we were talking about being controlled by things the past two weeks, is that many of us are being controlled by something we don't even think is connected. Okay. Our wireless controller, you don't see the connection, but it's controlling your life. Like, this doesn't look like it has a direct path, but somehow every time this issue can, comes up, it's moving something on the screen of my life. Okay. The reason this came to my mind is because I was sitting in my room and my kids was playing a game and I sat down on the couch and the character on the screen just started moving. And I'm watching it like, wow, they're going to get beat. This is not the moves they should be making. This doesn't look good. And my daughter starts yelling, Dad, get up. You're sitting on the controller. And I know my booty mass. <laughs> I said booty mass, okay, M-A-S-S. -S. I know it. I didn't feel it. And she said, I promise, you're sitting on the controller. It's right there. 
I get up and I was sitting on the controller. <laughs> and what I realized is because there was a connection I did not see, when I sat down and it came into contact with me, it started making decisions on the screen I was looking at, but I didn't even know it was me that was controlling it. I didn't see how there was a, everybody say connection. Okay. What I've come to realize is many of the things that we are dealing with and that we are cuffed to are because we have control. It has control over our life without obvious connection. What are the things that are in your life right now that have control without an obvious connection? Think about it. Because there are reasons why you do what you do and reasons why you go where you go and reasons why you don't like certain type of people. Not, not, not because you don't even know them, but they remind me of that anybody I see like that. What is in the background controlling what you're doing now, but you don't see the obvious connection? Literally, when I've been beginning to write down all of the things in my life, God said, you can talk about that, you can talk about that, you can talk about that, you can talk about that. But Mike, in this season you're coming into right now, I need you to talk about one that has been controlling people without an obvious connection, and I need you to do it now. And I was like, God, I don't really want to do it now because they're going to be mad at me. And he said, but they need to be transformed. And I was like, but then they're not going to listen to me no more. And he said, but then because if they listen to you, they're going to be listening to me because this is what I told you to speak. And I said, okay, God, so you want me to talk about it? And he said, boy, if you ask me one more time, if you want me to talk about it, then we're going to have problems. And so I'm going to tell you the title of today's message is cuffed to cash. I didn't want to. Let's just be very clear. Q, I didn't want to do this. But God told me, he said, there are so many of my children who are cuffed to cash. They're cuffed to the idea of finances. You live a life you hate for cash. You wake up every day mad to go to work because of cash. I need cash to live in this neighborhood because I ain't never going back to the hood. And literally, you pay for a house you're never at. You're cuffed to the cash. You got shoes. Uh, did, I, did I just step on something? You got shoes still in boxes. That you've never want my man in the back is like, oh, dude, he, didn't have to, he didn't have to do me like that. You got shoes still in boxes that you will never wear for the next five years because you're waiting for the right opportunity to kill him. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know what I'm saying. When I pull these out, I'm going to kill him with it. Okay. You've been waiting on the moment to kill him, but you're in debt. It's killing you. But you won't sell them. You won't let them go because you're cuffed to. They won't even say it. They want the cuffed to. Mm. Everybody say cuffed to cash. You get a makalaki taki taki tate venti every day. You don't even like Starbucks, but the people at your job. It's a cultural thing. Oh. You like the good old forger, Folgers. It's the best part of waking up. It's Folgers in your cup. You, you've, you've, you've become accustomed to that nasty taste. <laughs> that's what you like. But you spend $8 every day buying a drink that stays halfway filled. Because you're cuffed to the idea of what cash gets you. Fendi don't make you more expensive. Louis does not increase your love. Prada does not give you purpose. A new truck, a new boat, a new gun, a lake house, that stuff does not increase your value. It usually increases your responsibility. Oh, I just said a mouthful right there. But the problem is, we are going after the American dream 
climbing the corporate ladder, missing out on our children being raised. Why? Because we're cuffed to the idea of having cash. And ain't nothing wrong with cash. There's nothing wrong with it. The only problem is when it becomes the thing, finances, money, more, when that becomes your driving force in life, it will always disappoint you because it never has the power to fulfill. I know people with so much money that they could literally give everybody in this room 100000 Somebody said, where they at? <laughs> Call them. Invite them to church. But the truth of the matter is, when you run through the 100000 you're still depressed. Mm. When you run through the 100000 the 100000 is just going to magnify who you really are. If you pop in two pills, you get 100,000, you pop in 100 pills. If you a liar, you're just going to be more manipulative in the way that you lie. Money doesn't make, it magnifies. Oh, I'm talking right now. Money doesn't make you, it just magnifies who you really are. And because so many people in the church. So let me give everybody a pass that don't love God and doesn't call Christ his king. Okay, go after it. It, it kind of feels good. But everybody who calls himself a believer, if you're still cuffed to cash, God may not be your God. Uh oh. I'm going to tread lightly today. No, I ain't. Here we go. First point <laughs> cash is critical, but it's not Christ, it's a servant, not a savior. We got to have, like, we got to be able to function. It's a tool, but it is not our savior. And the truth of the matter is, some of y'all would shout more over a thousand dollars than God giving you joy in your heart. You, you would act a fool if somebody walked in Target and gave you a band. But we come in here, it's time to praise God. You see my shoes killing them. <laughs> and I came to tell you that cash is critical. We need it. But it's not Christ. It is a servant. Money works for me. Somebody say that. Money works for me. I don't work for money. Uh, see, now I'm having to come against generational curses and, and generational habits. Like I'm fighting... I don't work for money. I work for purpose. And because I work for purpose, even if I'm doing a job that I don't like, it's a part of my purpose that's developing me into something or somewhere or, or, or some, something that I need for the next step. But I'm going towards what God wants for me. But I don't work for money. Money works. That's going to be somebody's faith statement for the rest of the week. Because some of y'all are just trying to figure out, well, if I carry the two and then I go sell plasma and then if I, oh, uh, don't be acting like y'all don't be up there like, when can I come back? In two weeks? Okay. Stop it. We're trying to figure out what God provides for those who do his will first. I'm going to teach you. Matthew 6, 24. No one can serve two masters, for either you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. This is the Bible. You cannot serve God and be cuffed to cash. Do you know how strong that is? You cannot serve God and have money as your God. I wake up and the first thing I think about is getting this money. I go to sleep and the last thing I think about is getting this money. When I look at people, I, how much money do you think they got? You look at people's car like, 
Can they help me make money? Hold on, y'all. Nowhere in the scripture does Jesus say that needs to be our focus. It should be our fruit. Okay, let me, let me stop. When we talk about this in the original language, it, 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 this is one of the only places that God distinguishes himself against anything. Because most things ain't even worth comparing him to. But he says, you cannot serve God. And the, the original Aramaic word is mammon. You, you can't serve both of these. Let me take y'all back up because some of y'all looking at me like, Pastor Mike, really, just like really take me and show me. Luke chapter 16, verse 10. So we just read it in Matthew, but Luke is a doctor and is a little more detailed in certain things. So you're going to see a little more right here. Luke chapter 16, verse 10. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust or sloppy or raggedy in what is least is unjust also in much. Clean your car. Let me, <laughs> let me put my glasses on. Maybe you'll take me seriously. Okay. This is what we call stewardship. He doesn't care what it looks like right now. Can you keep it in the condition that it is in or better right now? He's watching how you handle what's in your hand. Keep screaming for more, but he's watching how you handle what's in your hand. Okay. He says, therefore, if you have been faithful in, un in this unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust true riches? Hold on. What we've been talking about is like money. He said, but I want to give you true riches. That's what I want to trust you with. And if you have not been faithful, oh, watch this one. I can't even, I ain't got time to even talk about this. But if you have not been in faithful, what it, it, faithful over what is another man's. I'm a CEO. I'm a boss. I don't work for nobody. Hold up. If you are not stewarding over something that somebody else is, there's certain principles you miss. This is for another day. It says, if you are not faithful or been faithful in what's another man's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one. Man, we've been loyal to cash. Man, we wake up when we don't want to for cash. Man, we will, we will throw somebody under the bus for cash. But what, what, what do you really think about them? Because I was thinking about promoting them. You or them. Well, you know, I've seen them a couple of times. They don't always stay till it's time to leave. And uh, that last presentation they gave, subpar. <laughs> like, why? Because you thought somehow their elevation was going to take away your ability to make more cash. Oh, God. How loyal have we been? We have, we have taken our character and put it under dirt for the possibility of more cash. Okay. It says, you cannot serve God and mammon. This is an Arab... Um, Aramaic word that means riches, okay? It was a Syrian god named Mammon. It actually came from Babylon. Just giving you a little history. You remember Babylon comes from the Tower of Babel in Genesis chapter 11, verse 1 through 9. And, and these people thought that they, they could get to God on their own. What this spirit of Mammon is, write this down. The spirit of Mammon is a belief that we don't need God if we have riches. This is the truth of the matter. Most people think if I got enough cake, don't really need God. If I got enough money, what well, I need to pray for? I'll pay for it. Oh, God. If I got enough money, I can step in and be God instead of need God. You don't say it out loud. We don't, we don't actually confess this, but this is what we think. And the church has been cuffed to this spirit of mammon, and that's why we've been cuffed to cash. And today I came to tell somebody that we're about to break this thing today in the name of Jesus. This spirit of mammon is arrogant, it's prideful, and it makes you look to, to other things than God. Write this down. Mammon promises you everything only God can deliver. I'm saying this... I'm going to just tell them the truth. 
because I used to live like this. I used to think that money, if I make enough beats and Beyonce allows me to produce her album along with Usher and Lil Romeo, that was the time I was in, okay? <laughs> then I'll make enough money to be able to come back to the church and impact it for God. I'm going to go outside of God, make some cash, and then come be effective for Jesus. Don't act like you ain't never thought that. Lord, please just let me hit the lottery. They got a, a good 52 bill, and Lord, I'll serve you with all of it. These are the thoughts, and it may not be at that level, but, but what I'm saying is somewhere we replace needing God with needing money. And Mammon, Mammon, listen, that being cuffed to cash, it promises identity, security, significance, and happiness, and it cannot provide any of that. Only God can give you identity, security, significance, and happiness. This is the lie of Mammon, and everybody has had this thought before. This, I'm going to prove it to you. Either I need God to come through or I need somebody to give me some money. If you've ever had that thought, I either need God to come through or I need somebody to give me some money, you've been cuffed to cash. And the reason I'm bringing this to you is because I don't want you to be shackled by this another day of your life. I don't want your children being growing up in a situation. My daughter the other day, she, Bella's becoming more aware of everything. And so literally we're at the cash register and we're paying for a bunch of people to get into an amusement park and she sees the price. And once she sees the price, she said, <gasps> she said, dad, you spent that much money on da 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 da. She said, no, no, never mind. No, I don't want to do it. I said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Baby, why wouldn't you want to do this if daddy's providing this for you? Because do you see how much it costs? Do you see how much? That's so much. I said, I, I love your spirit. Watch this. But daddy wants to bless you. And you have been obedient. And you've done what I've asked you to do. Let me bless you. But daddy, you're going to bless all of them too? Because cause you know, sometimes it's like, all right, bless me, but get all of them. She's like, but you're going to bless all of them? I said, yeah. She was like, you got it like that? And I said back, I said, yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> like, and in that moment, God said, Michael, that's how I want you to come to me. When you do what I ask you to do, when you've been faithful over what I've given you, I want to bless you. you. And you want to bless all of them too? Yes. This ain't got to be one person or somebody like this. I'm going to bless all of them. And I'm like, you got it like that? And guess what God said? I got it like that. This only happens when you keep him in his rightful place. So here we go. Okay. Um. Money is not the answer to your problems. God is always the answer to your problems. And some of you right now think money, money's going to answer that. Yeah, money may help it. Money may be the tool you need. But anytime you have a problem, how did you even get into the situation in the first place? If you're going to get out of the situation and stay out of the situation, you need God to transform your mind. So what I'm saying to you is, Money might be a part of the solution, but it is never the thing that is what we need fully. God is the answer to every problem we will ever have. And I know all the way up until this point, some of y'all, y'all just battling, struggling because you're thinking about your situation right now and how a cool 30,000 would solve all your issues and, and take away. It wouldn't take away the anxiety. You wouldn't get that alert every month, but you still wouldn't be able to sleep. Why? Because you need God to do more than give you cash. And if you're still debating right now, if this is okay, you're cuffed to cash. I heard one of my friends 
um, um, asked some people, he said, what's the highest form of value? And a lot of people said cash. And my friend, Dr. Darius Daniels, he said it like this. He said, cash, money, ain't even in the top three of the things that you need. He said like this, if I give you a million dollars today and you die tomorrow, which one do you want? The million or your life? You want your life. So that means time is more valuable than cash. If I give you a million dollars today, but then you have to be sick for the rest of your life, which one do you want? You want your health. So that means health is more valuable than cash. If I give you a million dollars today, and then I tell you your mama got to die tomorrow. Somebody's like, well, <laughs> I, I know you, 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 no, stop it. Not my mama. What that means is relationships are more valuable than cash. So why are we being controlled by this thing that's not even as valuable as everybody makes it seem? You will get up and work a double for more cash and won't go to your kid's recital. I'm providing. Well, your children need more than J's and dresses, shoes and vacations. They need you to see them, <laughs> soothe them, comfort them. They need like, but the truth is, it's a little easier because a lot of us are cuffed to cash. Okay. So um, write it down at a point. Finances aren't the highest form of compensation. Watch this. Fulfillment is. I have never, by the grace of God, I have had, as I'm about to turn 36, I've had some opportunities to receive some resources from different things that are like, God, how did that happen? And I'm going to just tell you, because nobody ever told me, like, when, whatever the biggest check you've ever gotten is, when you get it, it feels good for 48 hours. Like, after you, like, dang. <laughs> wow. You start walking with a little swag on. <laughs> you go to the bank different, though. You don't do the drive through You go in. You be like, hello, hello. Hey. Like, you just be doing random weird stuff. And then it goes into this magical disappear land. And then you feel anxiety for a second, like, did they take it? Ah, there it is. You check your account. You go eat a nice dinner. And then all the things... That was a problem before. Still be a problem after the check. I'm telling you, I thought it was going to be like a mad, like I thought I was going to lose weight when I made more money. Like, I don't know. I just thought it was like, you rich, you skinny. Like, I thought it just, it felt like you needed. Diddy said it. The more money. Do you know they take more money? Government takes more money when you make more money? I don't know if everybody knows that, but like a million ain't a million. A <laughs> hundred thousand ain't a hundred thousand. I mean, it looked like that on the check. Do you know people want to be paid for helping you count your money? No, I'm just telling you things that I didn't know. Did you know that when people find out you might got a little money, they start asking if they can have some of your money, and it'd be the people you love, too. Like, I heard God blessing you. <laughs> Why are you telling us because I don't want you cuffed to it. I want you to know the greatest thing, the greatest form of payment is fulfillment. 
And some of the most fulfilling things in my life I didn't get paid for. You are missing moments that God wants to richly bless you. Because you're looking for there to be zeros behind it. When it might be a hug. Some of the greatest moments you may ever have may not come in commas. It may come in a conversation. Like God's using you to help somebody else and you are feeling fulfilled. And, and, and that's why I just, I just want to help you understand Matthew 6.33, which is my favorite Bible scripture. And I've always been wired for things um, um, that, that make me understand the Bible, finances, all that other stuff. And I remember being 17 years old when this scripture came alive to me and I took it to heart. This is my favorite Bible scripture. And I'm going to preach a lot about it in 2023. Listen to this, Matthew 6.33. But seek first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, all of these things, they'll be added. It's like going to the fast food restaurant and you ordering five baskets of fries. You're not worried are you going to get ketchup. Like you're not like, oh my God, I wonder if I just order all these fries and I wonder if they're going to allow me to have ketchup. You ordered the fries first. The ketchup is added. Like, why am I stressing about what's added if I did the prerequisite? And most of us are worried about the after thing because we have not done the first thing. When you seek, everybody shout at me first. The kingdom, the king, what he wants you to do, how he wants you to act, how he wants you to maneuver. Money? Cash? Influence? That's at it. That's thrown in. When I got this connection at 17, Mo, it changed my life. Because I had never heard anybody say, just go full throttle after God, and everything that you think you need, it's added. Everybody was telling me, go after the things you think you need, and hopefully God can be a part of it. And this is why some of y'all know y'all called into ministry, but you're still working a job because it pays you six figures. It's 19 years, and you're working for a Rolex and a plaque. It ain't even a Rolex. It's a Movado. Let's be honest. They're not giving you no Rolex at that job. 25 years for a Movado and a plaque, and an insurance plan. And God said, it's been 25 years you've not been working in purpose. Why are you saying this, Pastor Mike? I pray for and counsel so many people who are cuffed to cash. Why don't you just give them, man, I'm so burdened by the problems in this world, all of the homeless people. Why doesn't the church do something? You the church? You have nine jackets. It's cold outside. You put a heart on a post by Be Heard movement, but you didn't take nobody a jacket. I see. I don't. I don't. But not the. Uh uh-uh. uh. This is an exclude. My grandma bought this for you. She did. She doesn't even. Let me stop. We make all of these excuses because somehow that's giving us value. Cuff to it. Cuff to it. And why am I so passionate about this? Because it almost took my generosity. It being cuffed to cash almost robbed me of the blessing of being a generous man of God. I was almost the most stingy, greedy, selfish person you've ever met. Until I found the revelation that it is more blessed to give than it is to. Most people will never live that out in their life because they are so cuffed to cash. Because the suit makes you, the shoes make you, the house make you, the clothes make you, what my kid has on. Your baby got baby Jordans and they only going to be that size for 13 days. 
You spent $78 on a shoe this big. I'm not judging you. But you spent $78 on a shoe this big and then keep them. Don't even give them to somebody else. Your brother having a baby, you're like, that's fine, but he ain't going to look as good as my baby. And it's like, what? What are you cuffed to? Cash. Okay. So, so when it says, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, all these things are added. Um, I, I wrote this down because it helped me get it. Cash always needs to be connected to the kingdom. Like, when I seek first the kingdom, cash comes. Like, if I, kingdom, if you're doing what God's asked you to do in the kingdom, he's always going to fund it. So when, when, when you get into your kingdom purpose, cash comes. My cash is connected to the kingdom. <laughs> That's why money should never be the focus. It should be the fruit. Stop focusing on cash. Stop focusing on money. Start focusing on helping. Start focusing on solutions. Start focusing on being a blessing. When you start focusing on the right thing, the thing you want comes because it's the fruit of the seed you planted. You never reap if you did not sow. And everybody looking for God to rain down a harvest on seeds they've never, ever sown. Why do you say connect? Because the heart of the kingdom is give somebody something. Bless somebody. If I seek first the kingdom, I walk into the restaurant and I was about to buy two of them. I'm going to buy one of them and I'm going to buy the person behind me something. That's seek first the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom is, you know what? Instead of buying all my kids 50 presents this year, I'm going to let them pick their top five. And then we're going to, as a family, bless another family with Christmas. Why are you saying that, Pastor Mike? Because that's the heart of the kingdom. And when God gives seed, he looks for people who will sow. And most people don't have sower on their name tag. <laughs> have y'all seen any sowers? I'm ready to give something to somebody. Like, think about it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm coming to bless somebody. Who's a sower? Look, somebody's hand. They was like, uh, I think, uh, is this real or is he really doing it? Or not? I don't know. I don't, is he trying to really get us? I said, who's a sower in the room? Um, can you bring me uh, my, my cash machine real quick? I need a sower, like somebody who like, if, if, I, if I bless you, you would bless somebody else. No, no, so, no look, now in the context of the message, everybody's like, me. Jeff, if I call me Bobby Sower. <laughs> real quick, I just need one more person. Somebody from this section. Who's a sower? Uh, where, where, where I said, I heard right here. Come, come here, right here. The one that said right here. Who's there right here? Come here. Y'all give it up for my man, the sower. Okay. Now, I, I want to do this little example for everybody. Just to, This is a real money machine, okay? And we got a couple dollars in it. <laughs> come, yeah, get, get my man up on the... Yeah, come on. Bring him up here. Come on. What's your name, my man? Andre. Give it up for Andre Sower. All right, Andre, I need you to step inside the money machine real quick, my man. Come on, just go in here. Look right here, baby, right here. There's some 50s and 100s and 20s in there, okay? You got, how much time should I give him? He said a minute. How much should I give him? 30? Well, uh, hold on, how much time should I give him? Put it in the chat, how many? She said 20 minutes, no! All right, I'm gonna give him. I'm gonna give him 15 seconds, okay? Look. You ain't got no seconds in here. Why are you saying no? Nah. How much should I give him, Roman? 30 seconds. All right, we're gonna give him 30 seconds because Roman said to give him 30 seconds. You got 30 seconds to pick up as much cash as you can, okay? Are y'all gonna cheer him on? All right, go ahead and start. Let's uh, go on start. Come on, start, start me up. I don't know, no, 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 no. Uh, 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 uh. Stop, 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 stop. Put it down. No, no, no. I'm not playing. Put. Stop the blower.
That man said, you ain't never seen no cash machine. You can't do that. You got to stay upright and you got to catch it. All right, he got 30 seconds. So start, start, the, start it right now, okay? Now you got to catch it. Now you better figure out a technique. And, and, and encourage him. He done let his belly come out and everything. He said, I'm about to get this money. How much we got? Oh, no, oh, no. Keep going. All right, five. Four, three, two, one. All right, stop it, stop it, stop it. Y'all give it up for my man right here, all right. Come on, come on, no, 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 no. He about to give it away. Okay. Now, all right. All right, okay. Um, Malia, will you come over here with my man and uh, can you just count, I'm gonna just count it with you, all right? Just, you hand it to me. Okay. Hundo, two hundo, three hundo, oh hundo. Five hundo, six hundo. Them a lot of hundreds you picked up right there. <laughs> Seven hundred, just pass me the hundos. Eight hundred, nine, ten. That's a thou. That's a band. Here we go. One, two. All right, I'll get it. I'll get it. Three. He said, uh uh. Three. Come on. Four. We got to hurry up. Five. Come on. Six. Yo, you got way more than I thought. Seven. Eight. Nine, ten, that's another band, that's two. One, how much you think it is? Two, three, come on. All right, we got three, that's four right there. Come on, five. Brother, this is just magical, six. Okay, so now we only 20s. We have six, 60, 80, one. Well, that's one. He said, oh, this man is serious right now. <laughs> so that's seven, right? Yep. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. We got, oh. That's 18. No, no, no. That's 18. 18. 20. Okay. Um, that's 2,000, 3,000. Hold on. 2,800. Right? 2,820. $2,820. Y'all give it up for my man. Okay. Now, you came up here and I told you that wasn't yours. Yep. So you did the work mm -hmm. to be a blessing. Yep. Mm -hmm. All of the work. Right huh? Let me do it. I'm ready. You found somebody? I'm boom. Boom. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No, hold, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> you, don't, you don't. Hold on. <laughs> this baby is excited. I don't even know what I asked him to do. Boom, boom, boom. Like, hold on, brother. Okay, okay. I want you to find one person that you're led to. Led. Oh, oh y'all missed the word. That you're led to from up here. Because all of your work, he's sweating a little bit. He's like, he's, he, he did something. But he did it knowing the purpose was not for him to keep it. He would be blessed to be a blessing. If you need a for real blessing in the room right now, like, there, like something for real is going on, raise your hand, okay? Who, you got five seconds. Um, okay, I got it. Go, who is it? Over there, my man, or over there with the orange beanie. Oh, there's a lot of people over there. You're raising your at hand. The, at the very back? Yep, very, very back. Hey, my man, it's you. No, 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 it's you. You turned around. Yeah, you, come here. Come here. Mm -hmm. He think this the price is right. He like, oh, shoot. Come on. Hey, bro, you got to, hey. Come on, price is right. Come on, y'all. Give him high fives all the way down the aisle. Come on. You got to hurry. We on live TV. Come on. Come on, y'all, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, sir. All right. So, um, he, yeah, he gonna have to, come on, come on, bro. Come on, bro. I gotta, you gotta hurry. Come on, come on. You gotta move, brother. All right. Yeah, he said that's crazy. Until. It happened. Okay. Yep. 
What's your name, bro? What's up, bro? You know who I am. Yeah, I know who you. What's up, baby? What's up? Let's, let's, let's go to see. Watch this. God called you from the back. That's crazy, ain't it? Until it happens. I know who, I I know who you are. That's crazy. Until it happens. <laughs> God called you from the back. He blessed somebody from over here to find somebody over there to be a blessing. But this is how God works. Half of what you were blessed with, you got to bless somebody else with. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so who else need, has a need in the building right now? Okay, so just find somebody real quick. Just, just We got to do it real fast, though. A real live example. Real live example. What, oh, he said, ah, ah. Don't play him like that. No, 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 just, just, just pick somebody okay, right here. Okay, right here in the blonde. Right, 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 where, right here, right here, come here, sis. Blonde, right blonde, right here, right here, right here, come on. All right, come on, hurry up. Okay, so watch this. So watch this. Now, most people would think that my man who started it off is the loser. How you doing, sis, you good? Okay. So you got $1,400, okay? This is real money. Okay, this is not fake, this is like, this is like this is real, okay? All right, cool. So, so, so the blessing was provided by somebody's work. But it was received by grace. They did nothing to earn, work, like, and then they were trusted to then be a blessing to somebody else. Okay, now watch. I I'm trying to tell you how kingdom cash works. Because you've been faithful and haven't asked me, yo, Pastor Mike, when, uh, when, is, when all this is over, you gonna slide me something? Beforehand, I didn't know how much you was gonna pull out of there, but I already have five bands ready to give to you. You missed it. You missed it. Because I trusted the character of the one. You don't know what it's doing for him right now, but you better get, I want you to get a visual. God blessed so you can be a blessing, but before he blessed you, he already has something else prepared for you. Okay. Now, now, who leaves off of this stage blessed. I want to invite you to the kingdom. The kingdom is not about one person being blessed or this group of people being blessed. But I don't like this scene because it's only black people up here. I don't like this. We're a multi-ethnic church. Sweetheart, I need you to pick somebody white out here or Hispanic. <laughs> There's a black woman like, my daddy white. <laughs> like, no, stop. Can you pick somebody, please? Get somebody. Hurry, hurry. Come on, sister. Okay, come here. Now watch. Just hurry, just hurry. Now, now watch. Before, before you get, I need somebody Hispanic or Asian or, come on, somebody else. You come on, come on. She, she said, come on. Okay, okay, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here, we gotta make some room. Uh oh, hold on, we gotta make some what? Some room. We have to make room because the blessing has gotten too big to contain by one group of people in one space. I'm trying to show you our actual picture of what kingdom is supposed to do. Okay? So, 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 so everybody, 1400, 1400, 1400, 1400, all y'all getting 1400. You getting 5,000. Now watch. That's watch it. The, the reason, she said, you need African to up there. You need an African? My brother. Black Wakanda forever. You need African. I saw, I heard you. You ready? Come on, you come on too. International. Come on, let's get some international in here. Excuse me. I see you. She came ready. She walked up. She said, don't fall. Don't fall at the end. Don't fall. At the end. Just stand right there. Now stop. No, stop calling. I ain't nobody else coming up. 
But that doesn't mean you can't be blessed. Because it should not stop here. See, the only thing I'm asking, you didn't come to church looking to be blessed. But God blessed you. Now he's giving you the opportunity to bless someone else. Okay? This is what kingdom and cash, this is how it should relate. Do y'all hear me? Can we give God praise for all of these people? Y'all can go off. Joe is going, they're going to take all your information. We're going to make sure. Why are you crying, bro? It's all good, bro. My family and all. <laughs> we moved here. We moved here from Oregon. <laughs> moved here from Oregon. <laughs> We've been following Transformation Church for over five years. And I just wanted a chance to be in the building. <laughs> you have inspired, God through you has inspired my family. You don't understand. Oh, shoot. I ain't never saved money before. I ain't never gave a homeless person stuff before until I started becoming a part of this church. I didn't ever know how to hold a job. And following this church, the word of God through you changed my life. You don't understand. I was hoping one day I could meet you. And now look what God did. He let us meet in front of the whole world. Can we give God praise for transformation in Christ? That's what it looks like. Come on, we're going to chop afterwards, brother. He, he messed up, y'all. This brother, he... It's like your drunk friend. It ain't his... It's not his and what he said going off, he said it ain't about the money. He's been transformed. Okay. 5000 What, $5,000 did? $5,000 didn't do that. God did that. The 5000 just was a catalyst to be able to point to how good God was in that man's life. Like, do y'all see what I'm saying? And, 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 and I, <laughs> I'm not going to make it through this whole thing. But that was a message in itself. So... So if you want to understand how kingdom works, it means you have to uncuff from cash. There was a rich young ruler. You can go look at this whole story in Mark chapter 10, verse 17, that he ran after Jesus, it says in verse 17. And he, he came running up to him, knelt down and asked, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus always dropping gems and just making you think, why you call me good? Only God is truly good. But never mind, you ain't ready for that. To answer your question, you know the commandments. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. You must not cheat anyone. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, it's your boy. I've done all of these things since I was young. Looking at the man, Jesus felt, I love this, genuine love. He felt genuine love for him. Um, come close, bro. There's still one thing that you haven't done yet. He told him. Go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. I've heard this scripture butchered for years that God wants people to be poor. That's dumb. That's, that's, it doesn't even make sense. How are we going to bless people if we ain't got nothing? Like that did it like, where I'm supposed to steal it? Oh, nope, that's one of the commandments. Thou shalt not steal. What? They've misinterpreted the revelation, and I'm going to give it to you today, and this is going to set you free. It said, at this man's, at this, that Jesus told him, go sell your possessions, give the money to the poor, the man's face fell, and he went away sad. He didn't even try, y'all. He didn't even try, for he had many possessions. One thing um, that we don't give this rich young ruler credit for is um he at least was seeking jesus 
Like literally, if you look at it in verse 17, as Jesus was starting out on his way, Jesus was going this way. A man came running up to him and knelt down. He had the first part of Matthew 6, 33 down. Seek first. He did that part. But at some point, and I'm telling all Christians this, your seek can't just stay a seek. At some point, you can't just be like, I'm going after God. I'm in your presence. I'm here for you, Lord. At some point, he's going to ask you to do something. Let me put it in a point. At some point, your seek has to turn into a sacrifice. Oh, that's nasty Bible right there. Keep seeking him, but then do what he says to do. At some point, seek him and stop hanging out with those friends. What is that going to be? A sacrifice. You're going to have to sacrifice your social life for a season because you're not emotionally stable enough to make your decisions by yourself. So you need to get away from them so you can hear from God and find your own identity outside of that friend group. Oops, I'm in your business. <laughs> what, what God is going to ask you to sacrifice. Somebody say sacrifice. If your seek never turns into a sacrifice, you will never see the promises of God. And I wish somebody would have told me this. You can't just sing the songs and come to church. If you're not giving up something, it will never materialize what you're believing for. And how does Jesus test this man? He says, um, yeah, go sell all your possessions. He wanted his seek to turn into a sacrifice. And this is not just in money, y'all. Um, fella, if you seeking her, you like the way she moving, you like the way she talking and walking, <laughs> and you infatuated and you hollering on, at some point, it's going to go from a seek to a sacrifice. You, you, you going to have to do stuff you didn't think you was going to do. And she said, I know that's right. <laughs> you, you, you're going to have to put, if you like it. I think it was prophetess Beyonce. She said, if you like it, you're missing out on your promise because you don't want your seek to turn into a sacrifice. Oh, God. Yeah. Some of y'all go to the gym seeking for the best gym. Is it Gold's Gym? Is it Lifetime? Is it my hotel? You've been seeking for months. But at some point, that seat got to turn into a what? You're going to have to lift something. You're going to have to. You're going, you can make all the stretching videos you want to. But at some point, the seat has to turn into a I just came to tell you, it's the same thing with money. If you're going to seek God at some point, he's going to say, I want some of it. I want you to use it for something that you would naturally use it for. I know you could go buy yourself another, but I want you to sow into this. And, and let, me, let me show you the, the key to it, because when I looked at the scripture, he said, go sell all your possessions. Man, when you really dig into the scripture, it just changes your life. He said, sell all your possessions. That was the sacrifice. But then he said, sow it. What do you mean? Give it to the poor. Those are two totally different things. I could sell all my stuff and just have more for my investment. But he said, Sacrifice and then sow it. Let me say it in a point. Sacrifice is solidified in sowing. Like there's something exponential that happens when you take what you sacrifice for. Did y'all see what happened to this man? He sacrificed. It was his hands. It was when he was picking up that money. Nobody else was working, but it was solidified. Did y'all see he broke down crying after the fourth person? His blessing sowed into them. This is what God is requiring all of us. This is why God asked us to share our testimony. It's because all the crap you went through does not get solidified until you give that story to somebody else. I think about my friends who, who were up here, Bree and Aaron, a couple of weeks ago. All the crap that they went through, all the sacrifice, all the marriage counseling, all the different things they went through. It didn't get solidified until Aaron told me God's coming into his barbershop saying, man, thank you for sharing that message. Me and my wife are going to actually work on our marriage now. Yeah. What? 
All the sacrifice was actually solidified when they gave it away. And what I'm saying is some of y'all been through a whole bunch of crap that hasn't made nothing yet because you're not willing to give it away. The same thing with your finances. God said, do you know how much I could do if I had control of the resources that I give you the ability to get? It does not become solidified until it's sown. So um, as I was reading this to bring it to an end, the goal of this parable was not for church people to think either I follow Jesus or I live a broke life. That wasn't it. The goal was not broke. The goal was broken. He was trying to get this rich young ruler to be uncuffed or broken from the thing that gave him significance. His title was rich. They didn't say his name. They had identified him by what he had accumulated. Rich, young ruler. Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, that can't be your first title. So I don't want you broke. I want you broken. And there is no telling if this young man would have not been the replacement for Judas in the treasury because he was obviously good with money. It just was he didn't have money. Money had him. He didn't even try. He didn't even try to uncuff. And today, I'm just asking everybody in here, if you're going to uncuff from cash, you got to give it. There's no other way. How I got rid of being greedy in my heart is I gave it. I'll give it to you in a point. It's got you until you give it. I'm done. It's got you until you give it. Anything in your life, in your bank account, in your closet that you can't give away, you don't have it. It has you. I told, I told them, bring me that last, uh, that last little thing. Bring me them shoes. I literally got a pair of shoes last night. Mo, am I lying? I'm telling the truth. I got these last night. Mo seen them. Bring me the shoes in the jacket. You got them? You got them? Thank you, baby. They not open, y'all. These didn't even come. Um. <laughs> DJ Khaled came out with a shoe called We The Best. And these mugs is so clean. They're Jordan 5s. And I mean, they just, mm, just... And I was literally preaching this sermon to Charles in the green room. And just finished, to, I mean, on the inside, y'all, it's so, I'm not sponsored. If DJ Khaled, if you want to sponsor me, that's fine. But um, I literally was in the green room. And the Holy Spirit said, if you don't give them away this morning, they got you. It's my birthday. <laughs> it's, my, it's mine. And God said, what a blessing. That I had you pay for something that was somebody else's. And you got to enjoy carrying them around <laughs> for one day. Will, come here. Will uh, Heckenbach. I've been watching you so... Y'all can clap it up real quick. As soon... As soon as the Holy Spirit said, you got to give them away, he showed me Will. And uh, y'all don't know, but Will is one of the best people in the world, serves this vision tirelessly. And um, today, I just wanted you to know I love you. I appreciate you. I care about you and your family. You the best. Another one. But y'all know what happened. 
God just allowed me to graduate to the place where he can trust me with anything. Those shoes didn't have me. I had them. And now Will has them. (laughs) My question is, do you have cash? Or does cash have you? The only way to break this cycle is to give. Now, we're not taking no second offering today. So this is, would be the time in most churches where they cue the music and the pastor would be like, I heard the number 1,620,000. <laughs> like, I'm doing that crap. Because at the end of the day, if it, if it doesn't come from a pure place of your heart, it's manipulation anyway. We don't want that. All I'm asking everybody to do, every year we do this, but I think it's going to be a more spiritual act than it is anything else. On December 4th, people are going to come from all over the country to sow in crazy faith, y'all. And the testimonies we have of people who trusted God with whatever he said, not with what we said, all we want you to do is pray, God, is there anything you would have me to give in this offering? And this is the crazy thing. This is the time of year. Like, I tithe. Like, that's the first level. If you don't tithe right now, y'all missing out. It's a protection. It's blessing. It's all kinds of stuff. T- t- 10%, we waste it anyway. <laughs> we waste it on stuff that don't fit us. We got clothes that we bought for a size we ain't about to be. Like, you know what I'm saying? Let's be honest. Like, we waste it anyway. But uh, 90% with God's blessing is better than 100% without it. So if you're, if you're not tithing, man, I'm encouraging you. Start tithing. That's the first level. But then you can graduate to a second level. And the second level is offerings. And when God tells you and pricks it on your heart to give something, but there's nothing better than doing it. But there's a third level. Everybody say there's another level. <laughs> the highest level is sacrificial offerings. What you mean? You just seen one. It's one that you'd be like, oh, that hurt. That's the level where God starts doing things you never thought you would ever see in your life, and it was possible. I'm believing, God, that this year, before this end of this year, I think there's 40-something days left in the year. Like, we ain't got that much more time. Like, I'm believing that there is thousands of people that won't just do the first level of tithing, but in this short span of time, we will go from the first level to the third level. Like, I'm going to start tithing, but dang, I'm going to get before the end of 22 to sacrificial offering. And as we come and sow in crazy faith, I'm ready to see God do a miracle. Not in the church. In the church. Like, God has blessed this building. We got a nice building. We got We don't need that. We need the spirit of mammon to be broken off of our minds. We need the, the, the principles of poverty to no longer pass down from generation. We need the, the, the goal of greed in our lives and our families to be eradicated. How does that happen? We got to, everybody say give. Generosity is the number one way that people become more like God. For God so loved that he, it's his core characteristic. Would everybody stand all over the world? If you've been cuffed to cash, or you just want a, a deeper heart of generosity, would you just lift your hands everywhere? Because I'm the first one to say it. Father, I thank you that I delivered your word in the best way I knew how. Today, God, I'm asking that you would uncuff us from our need for cash more than our need for Christ. <laughs> Let us be married to the idea of you being provider. The one who has And the ability not to just meet our financial needs, but meet all of our needs. Today, somebody needs a healing. Today, somebody needs breakthrough. Today, somebody needs their mind shifted. Father, thank you that we are going to the one who is the source of it all. And no longer will we be cuffed to cash. Today, we are severing our tie to the spirit of mammon. and We are connecting to the life-giving source, Jesus Christ. Thank you for generosity erupting in this church. 
Thank you that this week we're looking for places to be a blessing. Your word said you give seed to the sower. So we have to make up in our hearts right now that we're going to sow and you will provide seed. Father, let us be the answer to prayers, not just praying to get prayers answered. Thank you that families change. Thank you, Father, that legacies change because we will seek first. Everybody say first, the kingdom. God, I thank you that you'll add everything else. You're in this room and you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Let me introduce you to the king of the kingdom. He's the one that took somebody like me who was addicted to pornography, a liar, a manipulator, somebody who had a felony uh, car insurance fraud case and say, yeah, bring that all to me. And I'm not going to make you perfect, but I'm going to make sure you're progressing. And today, the man you stand, that you see standing before you has transformed because Jesus' love has come in and wrapped his arms around me. I've experienced the grace of God. And today I want to offer that to you. Yeah, your eternity will, will be secure, but that's not the best part. You get to walk with God every day of your life. And today, if that's you and you're saying, Pastor Mike, I want, I want to make Jesus my Lord and Savior, not just Savior, not just get me out of this, but Lord, show me which way to go. Tell me what to do because I know your plan is best for me. I want to let you know that's the best decision you could ever make. If that's you on the count of three, I want you to lift your hand. We're not going to embarrass you and call you up or do anything like that. We're going to pray together. But I want you to identify. Just like if I said, does anybody want $1,000? Hands will go up. Right now, this is way more valuable than any amount of money. It's a relationship with the one who is and is to come. If you want a relationship with Jesus today, whether you're in the room or you're watching online, on rebroadcast or 10 years from now, I want you to lift your hand. Today is the day of salvation. One, I'm so proud of you. Two, your name is about to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I hear claps already. Three, somebody lift your hand right now if you're in this room. I see you. I see you, sister. I see you, my brother. I see you over. Wow. Oh, come on, church. I see you. This is what it's about. Hey, Transformation Church is a family. Nobody prays alone. So let's all just lift our hands and pray this prayer together. God, thank you for sending Jesus just for me. Today, I'm uncuffing from everything that's not like you. I believe you lived, you died, you rose again for my freedom. And today, I give you my life. Change me, renew me, transform me. I'm yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, can we celebrate all over this room? Oh, y'all, heaven is turning up right now. Can we celebrate all over this room? Hallelujah. Next week, we're going to take it to a whole nother level. This week, watch the message back. Anytime you get frazzled about finances, watch it again. Because God's going to uncuff us because he's our source. I love you. Thank you for all the birthday wishes. This is the best church to lead in the whole wide world. And until next week, go out and live a transformed life. Hug two or three people. We love you. Thank you so much for watching this message. We pray that it encouraged you. Our vision is to represent God to the lost and found for transformation in Christ. And if you would like to partner with us in giving, you can text GIVE to 82. 8282 or visit us on our website. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, and check out our other sermons as well. Our service begins every Sunday at 1045 a.m. Central Standard Time. Now go out and live a transformed life.